Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Indy Alaska is a groundbreaking series that dives into the lives of people living in the last frontier. Each episode introduces you to colorful characters from around the state. Funding for Indy Alaska is provided in part by Alieska Pipeline Service Company. Catch the latest episodes at alaskapublic.org. The National Weather Service. And good Friday, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with you on this 13th of November. As always, we encourage you to stay safe by checking the weather frequently at weather.gov slash Alaska. You can do so uh, easily online on your phone or on your computer or uh, simply give us a call 800-472-0391 for the 24-hour weather line. Uh, NWS Alaska is on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube. You can reach all of our weather service offices, of course, on Twitter there, NWS Juno, NWS Fairbanks, or NWS Anchorage, or even NWS Alaska if you like the entire statewide view. And when you're on Twitter, use hashtag AKWX. That helps us know you're talking about Alaska weather. Even if we don't follow each other, we can still communicate and share our pictures together and share our weather information if you have snow reports today. The folks down in Juneau would love to hear about that. Uh, you can use that hashtag again, AKWX, short for Alaska Weather, and uh, tag them at NWS Juno, and that'll help them complete their weather picture about who had snow, who didn't have snow, and who's still getting some blustery weather across southeast this evening. Here's a look at what's going on in southeast. We have winter storm warnings continuing for the Taya Inlet and Klondike Highway regions there, uh, generally north of Juneau. And for the Haynesboro region, still talking about some additional snow until about 9 o'clock tonight or so. We're talking about uh, snow uh, totals that may reach upwards of 10 to 18 inches in some cases. So significant snowfall, mainly along the highways now, uh, is expected to continue for just a little bit longer. Most of that will begin to taper off. But again, uh, significant snow could impact your travel. So if you're just about to get on the road or the ship to head up to the road to get out of town, uh, keep that in mind. Uh, conditions might not be very easy to navigate through uh, for visibility, for just traction on the roadway. Conditions could be fairly tricky if you're trying to get up uh, through some of the highways there. So winter storm warning continues for just a little longer there as conditions are gradually improving in southeast over the weekend. We're going to skip to the other side of town and look way out west as we always do, starting off in the Bering Sea in the northern Pacific. Uh, there is a wave of low pressure right here. You can see that because of this big leafing out structure of clouds. It's kind of blossoming out and diverging. This is actually what we call this divergence is the air spreading out here. And as that air spreads out and away from each other, uh, it helps to initiate lift underneath that. So with the air moving out and away, you get bubbles of air rising up in between and that void that's created by the splitting air trajectory. And uh, you start to get more clouds as a result of that. And so we get uh, some more development down here across the southern parts of that uh, system. And all that cloud cover is working its way through the jet stream, going to meander its way up toward uh, the eastern Aleutians and the Alaska Peninsula and into the Gulf of Alaska. This is all mostly well south of Alaska right now. On the northern side of that jet stream, though, is some significant cold, and a lot of that cold is settling into central and western and southern Alaska tonight. Uh, many locations that have seen uh, clear skies have uh, seen a significant drop in temperatures there. And with that comes more and more ice forming across the western coast. Even some of that ice coming out of the rivers now is that water, the fresh water, is a little bit easier to freeze up than the salt water, of course. And we're starting to see some new ice forming across some of the deltas there in the Yukon region as well. So lots of changes with the cold moving through in many different ways. If you look carefully, you can find that spiraling shape feeding its way into and pointing right directly to the bullseye. That is our current low pressure system right across the north and eastern Gulf, just south of Yakutat. Probably some good surfing weather there if you can uh, brave the cold and wet weather there. South of that, look at all this bubbling structure here. Those, each one of those is a shower, maybe even a thunderstorm that's forming and uh, moving in some of that very convective weather. weather. Um, the sur sea surface temperatures are still warm. The air coming off of Alaska is still pretty cold. 
and that creates a perfect uh, environment for uh, what you could envision a hot air balloon doing. Hot air at the surface, inside that balloon, wants to go up. That's exactly what's happening right here. We are bubbling up the atmosphere and creating those showers and sometimes even thunderstorms today. More of those were seen across uh, southern sections of the outer coast of southeast earlier today. And the back side of this is cold and dry, and it's all working its way through south central and Kodiak. Significant decreasing clouds across uh, Cook Inlet today. And certainly last night for the Matanuska and Susitna Valleys and around the Anchorage Bowl led to a pretty chilly night. For many around Fairbanks, you can still see some waves of clouds and snow working through the region today. More of that is still upstream and yet to come. Barrow today settled down to about 6 below. That was the high temperature. 10 below was the morning low. Places like Sitka were on the considerably warmer side of that, up to 45 today with also a consequence of 2.2 inches of rainfall out across the west. Uh, plenty of clouds working through Nunavak Island, St. Matthew, and the Priblobs, and places in the central and eastern Aleutians saw a less windy day. Southeast, still a little blustery. Most gusts were in the 30 and 40 mile an hour range. Here's the weather map now. Low pressure still just south and west of Yakutat at 974 millibars. Uh, most of southeast is on the wetter side of that, but again, there's still snow falling around the Haines and uh, uh, Taya Inlet region as well as the Klondike Highway. Snow continues for the interior and along the southern Alcan border. Clouds continue north of the Brooks Range as high pressure is trying to establish itself across the uh, central parts of the coastal plain. We're seeing some light snow around the western and southern parts of the Seward Peninsula, including Nome and Tin City this afternoon and this evening. Low pressure across the western bearings organizing at 1,000 millibars with a brief area of high pressure trying to latch onto the eastern chain and the Priblobs, most of that just east of the islands now. Some light rain was falling across the southern tip of the Alaska Peninsula. Tonight, the low pressure system across the northern Gulf will continue to fill in a little bit. That means it's weakening, but it still has a circulation to contend with. But with that, we still get some rain showers across southeast, snow showers across the north, and areas of uh, snow showers continue for the middle and upper Yukon Valley, as well as the middle Tanana Valley, spotty snow showers across southwest. And intermittent snow showers for most of the bearing is a very unstable system continues to spiral out there. Look for some light rain across the central and eastern chain and a few snow showers for the Beaufort Sea Coast. Places like Kaktova could see a few with high pressure still trying to get a grip up there. Better chance you'll see fog and flurries than anything else. For Saturday, the 991 millibar low across the central bearing will send a cold front toward the central and western Aleutians. That should help to spark a few areas of rain and snow showers for the chain all the way up to the Alaska Peninsula. A better chance you'll see rain showers for a large part of southeast tomorrow. Low pressure continues to weaken and fill in across the northeastern Gulf. Wind should settle down as well too, but you'll notice that boundary is still sitting there and we still have a little bit of a pressure gradient to contend with. So winds are going to be switching around a little bit, especially on the inner waterways throughout the day. For most of south central, most of southwest, really most of the interior, especially the northern and western interior, you're going to see a significant decrease in cloud cover. It looks like high pressure will lock in some areas of fog in the morning and you may have kind of a hazy sky from time to time, but by and large, it's going to be a fairly clear but pretty cold day for a large part of the state. And you'll notice that for Sunday as well. High pressure is really strengthening up across the north now. That happens with really cold weather. Pretty easy to build that big protective dome of stable air across the region. It's exactly what we see in Fairbanks uh, as we get into the darker months. And at 1,021 millibars, it's starting to turn into that rough, tough, and hard to bluff kind of weather. Out across the west, though, we start to see the low pressure system deepening to get around that, and it does. It uh, strengthens just a little bit more to 989 millibars, and with that, we get a chance for snow showers for the central and eastern Aleutians, as well as the Bristol Bay region and southwest with low pressure a little bit further out across the western Gulf. These two systems will eventually kind of merge in together. The system across the eastern Gulf is weakening. It's about to fall apart and will be absorbed into the newer system eventually. Watch for rain and snow showers across some parts of the higher train in southeast. Still looking at rain showers down low and still fairly dry for south central and most of the interior. That's a look at your surface weather. Here's what happened today in southeast. We saw temps back in the 30s and 40s around the capital city, pretty close to 40 degrees. It was uh, fairly mild in Sitka today, eventually making it to 45, but like I said, it was fairly wet. Uh, places like Annette and Ketchikan also had plenty of rainfall, about an inch or so in those regions. Uh, capital city picked up almost an inch and a half. Lower 30s around Valdez, a blustery day in town and at the airport. 30 around Homer and Seward today, 26 for Kenai, 21 in Anchorage as you get out toward uh, Stony Point and the, the western passes there. Temperatures were in the mid-teens if you flew out that way today. Two in Fairbanks and snow was falling in the region earlier. Eight 
in Eagle, and it sounds like the rivers are starting to freeze up in that region there, especially uh, according to uh, Ann Millard. And uh, four around Northway there, uh, temperatures continue to hold in the single digits as they did yesterday. Looking further north around Fort Yukon, three above. Anuktuvik Pass, though, 13 below. Some big cold there, and for Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse down to 17 below. One above in Kaktovik, 10 below in Barrow, just one degree milder around Atkasuk earlier today. Uh, that was after a temperature of uh, 20 below earlier. Uh, you'll notice around Kotzebue Sound, we're still holding in the single digits around Kivalina and Kotzebue, 17 degrees closer to Tin City, 20 in Nome around the Norton Sound region. We're looking at temps mostly in the teens, 19 in Grayling, and Antioch saw temps in the 20s today, 2 around McGrath, 22 in Bethel, and Bristol Bay and uh, most of King Salmon and Dillingham the regions were looking at temps in the upper 20s and lower 30s today. The Pribilovs above freezing this afternoon, mid 30s for most of the Alaska Peninsula, Sand Point, Falls Pass, Cold Bay, all in the lower to mid 30s at one point or another today. 39 in Unalaska and Dutch Harbor, 34 in St. Paul, and 38 in Shemium. Overnight lows are going to be cold. For the central and eastern interior, temperatures will approach 15 to 20 below in some cases. So big cold is here. South central just getting a, a, a nip of that. Uh, certainly nothing to complain about when you look up north. Uh, three around Talkeetna. Uh, temps in the lower teens for most of the Anchorage Bowl. The eastern side will be significantly colder as it always is. 27 in Kodiak, mid to upper 30s for southeast. No worries there, above freezing for just about everyone. Bristol Bay looking at mid-teens, 30 in St. Paul, 24 for uh, Nunavak Island, 22 around Gamble and St. Lawrence Island, 10 for Nome. And again, Barrow looking at three below with Bristol Bay temps back in the lower to mid-20s tomorrow. Bethel around 23, Nome 20 degrees, 6 in Barrow and temps around Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse. Uh, for all of our friends up there this week, it uh, looks like you'll be below zero for afternoon high temperatures. Uh, mid to uh, well, probably looking about five to ten below for the middle Tanonaw Valley. Four below in Eagle and low to mid teens for most of the uh, Susitna, Matanuska, and the Anchorage Bowl regions with mid 20s for the Kenai Peninsula, 33 in Kodiak, and upper 30s and lower 40s in southeast. And of course, you get a chance of rain. On to flying weather now. It looks like MVFR conditions will be the rule. If you have some type of visibility restriction, it will either be very isolated or uh, probably improving during the day. For the interior, there's a chance for some MVFR conditions to be uh, mainly along the valleys there and into some of the uh, foothill regions there of the higher terrain. Offshore of the Arctic coast and along the west coast from Nome southward to uh, Cape Newenham and around uh, Nunavak Island. And, kind of hop, hopping and skipping over the Alaska Peninsula and mainly offshore of southeastern Alaska, still hovering around Haines and Skagway, though, to Yakutat on the northern side of that frontal boundary until that washes out. Here's your pass conditions. It's going to be cold if you're flying through Anuktuvik Pass. We just saw those numbers there. Pretty chilly stuff. VFR conditions are expected there and for Adigan Pass throughout the day. No big winds right now for Lake Clark or Merrill Pass. Visibility should be okay. Rainy Pass is looking pretty good for your Saturday. Windy Pass we expect to be VFR. Same goes for Isabel Pass tomorrow. Nice thing about the cool and dry weather. You get VFR in Mentasta Pass as well. And for Tanita Pass, we're calling VFR for your Saturday. Portage Pass looks pretty good for right now. Chilkoot and White Pass, probably holding around NBFR. Remember, there's still going to be some snow in the region. The freezing levels, obviously, with the big cold in place, the surface freezing line has dropped south of Kodiak Island and uh, down to almost false pass in Cold Bay, hovering a little bit closer to Sand Point, actually, there in Nelson Lagoon. The 2,000-foot freezing level is just north of the Dixon entrance, not quite to Sitka. We're getting pretty close there. Uh, you can see a lot of cold that was taken over the state. And so with that weather pattern, we have a little bit of icing to talk about, but most of that big moisture has kind of moved on now. So we still have some pockets of isolated moderate across the western bearing, west of St. Matthew and the Pribla. I was just holding over western St. Lawrence Island and over the eastern Beaufort Seacoast. And some hit and miss icing still possible around parts of southeast, especially the north above 3,000 feet where snow is still possible in those areas. The jet stream is showing those powerful dips that are heading south. That is allowing the cold to drop south as well. More of that trying to organize across the bearing. Uh, the big cold and the big weather system that we've been seeing the last couple of days brought to us in part by this red letter L. Low pressure working across the Aleutians and dropping south on a 150 knot super highway of weather. That is a jet stream around 30,000 feet. At 9,000 feet, you can see that northwesterly flow uh, cutting down across the Bering Strait, meeting up with that westerly flow coming over the Aleutians, about 40 knots there out across the southern Bering, and then slowing down a little bit now across the Gulf of Alaska. Winds are fairly light across the northern interior, about 10 knots or so there at 9,000 feet. About the same there at 3,000 feet, a little bit more of a northerly cut in across the interior, but winds are still fairly light. 
They pick up across the western Gulf at 50 knots. Southerlies across the Yukon, 10 to 15 knots. And uh, south and easterly winds working across the Yukon Delta. Low pressure in this situation is just west of St. Matthew with westerlies coming through the Aleutians at 40 to 50 knots. So a little bit of chop at this level should be expected across the chain. Let's see what we have for turbulence and what do you know? There it is below 4,000 feet from the central and eastern chain through the Alaska Peninsula. Expecting some isolated moderate in these regions and through the Shelikoff Strait area and the western parts of Cook Inlet up through uh, some parts of the western Alaska range. Now for the northern and eastern Gulf below about about 4,000 to 5,000 feet, uh, you're going to still see some chop. We've got that surface boundary still hovering closer to the northern parts of southeast, and we still have that stronger flow here across the eastern Gulf. So a lot of wind going in a lot of different directions. And then below 3,000 feet around the Bering Strait, watch for some of those stronger northwesterlies coming down the capes. That's a look at your aviation forecast. I'll be back with your sea ice update as well as your marine weather here in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mary O'Connor with the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation and the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health. On behalf of Alaska Public Media, thank you for watching Hangar Flying. This evening, we are pleased to have Kate Jaranitsky on our show. Welcome to the program, Kate. Thank you. Kate is a pilot who's working on her ratings and is a student at a local university. Kate's also working at a local flight school. It sounds like you have a lot going on, Kate. <laughs> I do, as a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> and you recently received a new rating. Can you tell us what you accomplished? Um, I just got my commercial license here on October 2nd. Congratulations. Thank you. Now you did things a little bit differently than some people in Alaska who are working on a career in aviation. Where did you do your training? Um, I actually flew down, to, uh, not personally flew, but took a commercial flight down to Minnesota to um, get an advanced rating, so to just uh, get it within a few days. And why did you choose to go out of state to do this? Um, Alaska, unfortunately, doesn't have too many uh, training facilities for the more advanced commercial rating. Um, the aircraft are a little bit harder to find. I only found two places in the state that would do the training, and I started looking out of state to find a training facility, and I actually found one down in Minnesota that was actually a lot cheaper to go down and, and get the rating. Mm. And what type of aircraft did you fly? Um, it was a Cessna 172 RG, so retractable gear. Um, very interesting aircraft to fly. Uh, I don't know if I'd go back into it, but I probably will. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in order to prepare for your training, I'm assuming that you wanted to maximize the um, amount of time that you could prepare ahead of time and do all your research and as much preparation before you went down there. Um, what did you do ahead of time? Well, I got my uh, written test out of the way as quickly as possible, just decided to knock that out so I didn't have to worry about it. And then both of my private and instrument instructors both suggested a lot of material to go ahead and cover before I went down there. And so I really had the ground knowledge that I needed to go and take the test, the, um, the oral test. And so after getting that done and out of the way, when I went down to Minnesota, I could actually just focus on the flying portion and then just do a little bit of ground to make sure that I was prepared for the test. Okay. And what was your schedule like once you got there then? We, I had an instructor from 9 to 5, and I could do whatever I wanted with them during that time, either flying or ground. And during the morning is when we would fly, just because the turbulence was not there. After about one or two, it was getting pretty bumpy, so we decided to just call it a day at that point and see if we wanted to do some ground. Sure. And how long did you spend in Minnesota then doing this training? I actually spent a little bit longer than I would have liked. Um, it was a five-day course, but I was down there for about a week. The uh, place in Minnesota is just west of Lake Superior, so we did have some fog issues there. Um, visibility was about an eighth of a mile. <laughs> wow. So we did have some issues. We had some ground days. There was no flying, but we managed to get through it. So um, you also 
had um, a fair amount of flight training in Alaska under your belt before you went there. How does Alaska compare as a flight training environment versus Minnesota? Alaska is completely and totally different. I mean, if you're going to go on a cross country and you're leaving out of Anchorage, the only two places you can go are Talkeetna or Kenai. Going in the lower 48, you can go in any direction you want to, not have to worry about the mountains whatsoever. Um, it's actually pretty boring flying down there. It's pretty darn flat. I really enjoy flying in Alaska. But you were able to accomplish um, your goal and do it in a relatively short amount of time. Would you recommend this for other people who are interested? I would recommend it if they are trying to save a little bit on money, possibly spend that money on another rating. Um, that's what I'm doing. I'm getting my CFI next here soon. Um, so if you are dedicated, if you can do most of the groundwork on your own and then take the time to just go down there and fly your butt off, then I would suggest it. It really did work for me. And it's a lot of hard work, right? It is a lot of hard work, but it's really enjoyable. So that's definitely something uh, somebody would have to look at, um, being able to um, focus completely, preparing ahead of time, and then just sticking their nose to it and getting it done. Oh, definitely. Well, congratulations and thank you for being with us, Kate. You're welcome. We're going to have you back on our next show to talk more about your job and um, what you plan on doing with your CFI once you get that. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you to Alaska Public Media for their support of hangar flying and helping us to bring you the show. We really appreciate being able to bring you the names and the faces of some of the new aviation professionals in Alaska. Thank you for watching Hangar Flying, and until next time, fly safely. Thanks, Mary. See you again on Monday. Here's a look at the sea ice edge, and you'll notice that little spot there north of uh, Newixit and uh, Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse. That's kind of closed off again. We're still watching some new ice forming along the Chukchi Sea coast and along the Yukon Delta, as I mentioned. That's new ice there, especially where some of the fresh water is kind of leaking out into the bearing. As the winds settle down, the air is certainly cold enough to build new ice, so watch for changes there over the next couple days. You can always track the changes yourself at weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice.php. Now, on to the marine weather. Northerly is working across the Lynn Canal and through Stevens Passage. Those should remain fairly light now in the wake of the last couple days. 15 knots with 3-foot seas there. A stronger southerly flow still working through the Clarence Strait at 20 knots with a 6-foot sea. And westerly south of that front, remember that boundary is still hovering right across the north. So south of that, we have west and south southwesterlies around 15 to 25 with seas ranging from 14 to 19 feet just outside of the Dixon entrance and there's still the possibility of seeing some isolated thunderstorms there in some of those southern marine zones. Look for an easterly offshore flow around Yakutat that becomes southerly on Sunday up to 20 knots with the onshore flow from across sound all the way down to the Dixon entrance around 20 knots or so with higher seas though outside of the Dixon entrance up to 17 feet. Inside passages will be around 3 to 4 feet with 15 to 20 knot winds. They're mostly on a southerly flow for Sunday. For south central north and westerly winds are in charge across the Prince William Sound on the inside. That's 25 knots there and on the outside. But around the Copper River Delta, watch for some higher gusts to stick around. Those could be considerably stronger. 35 to 40 knots coming across the Barrens and off the Kenai Peninsula with 8 to 13 foot seas as you get into the Barren Islands region and east of Kodiak Island, 35 knots with a 12 foot sea. Northerlies inside of Cook Inlet are still holding around 10 to 15 knots, 25 knots crossing Shelikoff Strait uh, from the north and west. Those are going to diminish as we get into Sunday. And northeasterlies will take over coming down Cook Inlet and west of the Barrens around 10 to 15 knots with 3 to 4 foot seas. Northwesterlies are continuing across the north and western gulf at 15 to 20 knots and 4 to 6 foot seas are expected there. Inside of Prince William Sound things get a little bit quieter 10 to uh, 10 knots or so around the northeast with a 2 foot sea for Sunday so some improvement on the inside. In Bristol Bay, look for an easterly flow about 20 knots with a 5 foot sea and you have that west and northwesterly wind shaping up across the Alaska Peninsula and from Castle Cape to Chignik still holding around 30 knots with most areas around 10 to 12 feet. For Sunday, winds diminish a little bit more inside of Bristol Bay. We're going to keep that westerly flow though cutting across the southern tip of the peninsula as well as uh, Chignik. I look for 30 knots to as high as 35 knots south of Sand Point and King Cove with 8 to 10 foot seas in most areas. 
For Saturday for the Aleutians, it's mainly a west and northwesterly wind around 25 to 30 knots. Seas on the Bering side, 11 to 12 feet, 9 to 12 feet across the Pacific side with 10-foot seas from Kiska to Attu. On uh, Sunday, look for more of a stronger northwesterly flow to set up, about 35 to 40 knots with the central and eastern chain. And seas come up to about 21 feet from Unalaska all the way out toward Atka, 11 to 15 feet on the Pacific side. From Kiska to Attu, 10 to 14-foot seas are in charge with a west and northwesterly wind at 25 to 30. For the west coast, uh, kind of different flows going on here. We've got our southeasterly flow coming up the west coast, 25 to 35 knots with freezing spray, a possibility around the northern zones. Northwesterly is around St. Matthew at 40 knots and a westerly flow coming into St. Paul and St. George with an 11-foot sea. For Sunday, we get a northeasterly wind back. The winds strengthen up across the north, in fact, with 45 knot winds, 25 to 30 knot winds across the west coast and north and westerlies coming down through uh, St. Matthew and St. Paul and St. George, about 35 to 40, with 12 to 18 foot seas there. So a lot of change going on in the bearing as that weather system kind of cranks up here across the central part of the ocean. Uh, west and northwesterlies coming across the Beaufort Sea, 15 to 20 there on Saturday, and light winds on the Chukchi Sea coast until you get outside of Kotzebue Sound. Those pick up to 20 from the north and east with a four foot sea. Freezing spray is an issue there with 10 to 15 knot winds on Sunday, and winds remain about the same for the Beaufort Sea coast, west and northwest, about 10 to 15 over the ice on Sunday. Recapping tonight's weather, winter storm warnings continue for the uh, Klondike Highway region. Looking for storm fall totals now. By the time it's all said and done, 10 to 18 inches of snow. So if you still have travel plans taking you through that region or really any time this weekend, consider that conditions may not be at their uh, premium or their best as we go through the next couple days. Look for uh, snow, snow and rain showers across southeast. The snow showers are going to be pretty high terrain kind of stuff. So most villages are going to be looking at rain showers. Uh, for south central, uh, clouds will continue to decrease across some of the higher terrain, but it uh, looks like we're in for another cold and clear night. Most of the interior should be fairly clear through the weekend as well, with low pressure across the west building in and south. Thanks for watching Alaska Weather. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.